Being hyped up as well, we can hear them behind us, and that is from Occupy Thrones Corner, and they're getting ready to go in this second match of the day. Again, Ooh. crucial match here for Occupy Thrones and Echo ahead of them, but we're going to be jumping into the land of Dawn. Set Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to match number two, smash Echo smash. Philippines and Occupy Thrones. Oof. Again, welcome I don't know, man. Legends. Now that you've mentioned it, Arashi, the caster curse, right? The talent <laughs> prediction curse right <laughs> now. Jinx it. Yeah, there's been a lot of jinxing the last two days, man. So we'll see if Echo can break that curse or if Occupy Throne just gets that momentum, that buff from the curse. Right. To be fair, on a lane right here, there's still a lot of crowd control available to just shut him down completely. Divine Judgment, the taunts coming in from Leo, the Terror Fry coming in from Fury as well. There are options to play around with, but I really feel that there is no like, it's it's a certain case that Gado will have a very difficult time. Amaro though already forced to flicker early on here. Fury 77 rotates again, helping his Roamer out, but without that flicker early on, there's Ooh. not much that he loses. Maro's looking for Ooh. a cheeky steal. He doesn't get it, but he does get level two. Playing with danger there, uh, but Maro, you know, he's gonna stick around. He doesn't have the flicker, but early enough that it shouldn't really be too bad of a situation. Now that first turtle that does come up, you'll probably see Echo make a beeline for it and then force probably Occupy Thrones to try to contest that, or they just give it away and stay a little bit safer, right? Early game, Try not to let that snowball get out of hand here from Echo, which we've seen them do before, and just allow yourself to build up here for Occupy Thrones. Look at the focus on the bottom side, though. They're going to be looking here for Benny Cutie, looking for a moment. Leo's going to go down. Yeah, he tries his best to just look for some, just a CC there, but again, it's not really going to hit Oof. for now. Benny's actually going to be able to win out in that trade against Gado, too. So that rotation towards the bottom lane, not really achieving anything at all. It's actually going to be Echo who utilizes that and punishes Occupy Thrones for revealing themselves in the bottom lane without getting anything. And Echo are controlling the turtle side now with the turtle spawning. Occupy Thrones, I mean, it's, a, it's not a bad move to try and go for the other side of the map because let's be real, in the early game, trying to contest Echo with all this crowd control, all this... AOE abilities, it's gonna be a bit foolish of an attempt unless they can get some crazy pickoff. So they go for the play on the gold lane. As you said, Mirko, it's unfortunate they, they were unable to get anything, not even the turret gold. So for Echo, that's a small victory, it's one of many, most likely for this game. And I think that, I think, well, not it's level four, ultimates are being used to actually engage fights. Maro's gonna be caught, has the flicker, gets out again, and someone else used the flicker here. It's Gado in the gold lane. Yeah, I was just wondering, you know, about this matchup here in the gold lane specifically. Uh, Gato, they he has they have the news, right? There's no flicker available here. Gato's gotta be careful. That's why we see Morrow making his way too. But he should be oh, careful. Uh-oh, uh, walks up, gets knocked up, and that's first blood over to Benny QT. He had the he had the information, right? You you called it as well, Mirko. Mm -hmm. Flicker was down, they they played around that, and now they also gave that kill to Benny Cutie, right? He's running that Harith in the gold lane, has the mystery shop here. So the scaling there is going to be in his favor. It's going to make it really hard for Gato. Way the dragon and the bind judgment, locking Carl TZ down, and it's Maru who picks up a kill. But look who's here, all the way for oh. the XP lane. Sanford with the Petrify, getting Leo Petrified as well to pick up a double kill as Hulk rotates over to the mid lane. With a with fire, he's angry. Sanji's going to be oh. caught. Stunned up Hulk, picks up a kill and trades it back. But somewhere, it's still Echo who has the better trade. Hulk Smash. Hulk Smash coming in. That's a lot of damage that they can't ignore. And at least until later on, when they have some more items to deal with, this is what that Lapu Lapu can do. The Yuzong is a dangerous threat to the back line, but so is the Lapu Lapu. And in a way, a lot more dynamic as well. Uh-oh, Way the Dragon by Fury77, stealing it away. Just canceling out the engage or the pick potential that JP was looking for.
Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you, you have to constantly be worried, if you are Echo, about the Divine Judgment pickoffs, which we've seen Morrow do, right? He's going to constantly press that situation in favor for Occupy Thrones. They're, that's the tool they have, and they're doing it here. Morrow with Divine Judgment, the flicker, oh. JP does the same, and he brings Gato back. The Spawn Force was popped in, and the Muse Passion is not enough to take Benny down. It wasn't even enough to take him low. Echo get the turtle too, and it is a disaster for Occupy Thrones. Echo right now controlling the game, 2.3k gold lead. It's a 2v3 outplay on the back of JP, just really identifying who he needs to kick under the turret, and I think that just benefit them so much. Benny Cutie now 2 and 0, he has the mystery shop as well, so he'll be scaling a lot quicker than I think Occupy Thrones might expect. And on, on Harris, that's going to be very difficult because, again, we've mentioned it already, the lack of crowd control from the side of Occupy Thrones will be an issue in that mid-game. JP, again, just so lethal on this Joel. Gets the way the dragon down onto Leo. Oh. JP's going to be caught low, but Ash can be called TZ, who jumps in with the Tempest of Blades. Also has the follow-up from the Zvon Force from oh. Benny. Oh. Fury 77 forced to flicker out, and Echo, it's just Echo everywhere. Morrow, though, he's still holding on to the Divine Judgment, but... They give it the recall here. That's the thing, right? I mean, I feel like if you're Occupy Thrones, you've already tried a lot here in the bottom side. Gato, unfortunately, is zero and three. He is falling behind in terms of farm and everything else and itemization, so it makes it even harder for him. And that's why you see Echo, right? They know this weak point here, and they're gonna keep pressing it until at least they get that tier one. And that's what we see even JP doing here. But let's take a look at the items on how this has all resulted out. Rashi. Right, I mean, it's such a high-paced game. Benny Cutie at this point has a Feather Heaven and the Divine Glaive, so a lot of damage and a lot of DPS, not just burst damage, <laughs> but actually he is going to be walking into a bit of a trap, but JP turns it around yet again. With the way the Dragon, but it's going to be Maru who finds the Divine Judgment onto Benny, who's able to actually pop this Mon Force, looking for a trade. It's just JP who gets taken down in the mid lane. Sanji flickers forward. Hulk's going to be taken down with a one oh, basic one. attack to fade away from Sanji. I, I like to call that the athletic flicker, right? Because <laughs> that, so we've seen Sanji do that how many times now? He flickers in, gets someone really low, and then it's literally one auto attack My for God. the kill. It's, uh, it's down through the wire with these players, man. That's unfortunate for Occupy Thrones. They get a small victory, but now, without the mid lane turret, Echo can extend their pressure into the jungle. And now, it's thought that Gato was having a difficult time. Leo will start feeling oh, that pressure as well. But look at the play. JP, again, finding Maro. That's going to be the real world inflation popped in. JP going to be chunked there as Leo jumps in, looking for oh. that red tree. Does not get it. It's still JP. Wow! JP doing everything here, and that is the zoning potential that Echo has. We talk a lot, uh, a lot about the range differential. Having a real world manipulation means that they can do things like this. That's the Tempest of Blades, knocking Maro up. Carl TZ styling here in the game. Nine to three for Echo as Benny actually moves oh forward. Fury's gonna be taken low, wow. taken down to the mega kill. Sanford jumps in the way the dragon is there too, Ooh. and that's the passive. It's all just fadeaways and pure style from Echo. On the shoulders of Daddy JP, Daddy we're JP. seeing Echo just make play after play here. It's 6.5K now, almost eight minutes into the game, and this is tough, right? If you're Occupy Thrones, like I was saying, Gato, that gold lane, who you hope that you have available to come online for the late game is not going to be there anytime soon. BOD just being picked up here eight minutes in. And keep in mind, Carl TZ, he is doing something we've seen before, the killing spree on that link. So he is out for blood. And Benny Cutie, already a Holy Crystal at eight minutes? What? That is a lot of damage. And as we mentioned already, Gado will not be having a good time at all. So much damage, so much range from Sanji, but also all the dive coming in from the rest of the four players from Echo Philippines. Right now, focus on the top side. They're gonna get that tier two. All in the meantime, waiting 30 seconds for that next Lord to come up here. Again, at this point, this is a massive lead for Echo Philippines. Occupy Thrones gonna be forced to find any pick they could, they could potentially get here, but now you're gonna see even the pressure for that purple buff. If it comes up, Conceal Play gonna come out. Nothing committed just yet, but Occupy Thrones trying to turtle up here on the tier two. Meanwhile, Echo just trying to buy time for that next Lord, for the first Lord of the game to come up. Again, right, Echo, they got the lead. They're not really gonna go for these crazy engages. 
Because they don't need to. It's yeah. unnecessary, right? They already have control over most of the map right now. They can just constantly be playing around with the Lord, forcing Occupy Thrones to walk out of the base. And when they do so, that 7.4k gold lead speaks for itself. And they can see, still abuse the fact that Carl Teasy is just so mobile. He is still getting resources right now, but JP turns it around. Boy, the Dragon but Divine Judgment comes in. That's going to be JP taken down, but the backline is going to be targeted down by Sanford oh. and Benny QT with his Mon Force. One for one, Roamer for gold. It's Echo who takes the better trade once again. Leo gonna be able to taunt Sanji up. Maro's gonna be taken low. Carl TZ jumping in. Ooh. Maro flickering out of the real world inflation. The appraiser's wrath was so close to getting Sanji, but he's still here. He calculated that one. Flickers out to safety. Occupy Thrones have lost their jungler. Echo is on a mission right now, and they understand that Gato is part of their win condition. We saw that Sanford was able to actually get on top of multiple members earlier in that fight, but he ignores everyone and heads straight for Gato. That is dedication. That is a man of sh focus, determination, and sheer will. JP is a man, a man of, of violence. Focus. Oh, but there's another kick. Sanford, they're going to be targeted by Hawk Gato. as he smashes towards the back line, but Gato just gets melted down by Carl TZ. What is he supposed to do? You. He just can't, you know, withstand that damage anymore, man. I mean, 10,000K at this point, right? 10 minutes in. 10,000K, 10, that's a lot Ooh. of gold. 10,000K, that is a lot of gold. And they're marching, right? I mean, you got to handle this Lord, Occup Occupy Thrones. That's the question. But Can they even hold on this long enough? They have so much high ground damage as well coming in from Echo Philippines. And I can't help but feel like Occupy needs to play a bit more defensively, oh. but Echo won't let it happen. JP again with an engage, but oh, will oh, be oh, caught, but oh. Sanford finds the Petrify onto three, the Furious Dive onto two, and a kill on Gado. Mid lane base are going to be taken down now by Echo as they're looking to end the game. Oh, Benny just styling with his Mon Force under the base, under everything. Leo is still not able to find a kill. It's a legendary by Benny, and it's Echo who are still undefeated in groups. They just stomp down, march through the base, understanding that they have all the tools available, and they are rationing their utility so, so well. They do